Afghanistan is a country of a quarter of a million square miles, five times the size of England and Wales. It lies at the crossroads of Asia, and in former times was often the battleground between great rival civilizations. Much of the country consists of high, barren mountain ranges. These make transport and communications difficult. Only horses, mules or donkeys can negotiate the steep, rocky tracks. The Afghans are great horsemen. They are a vigorous warrior people forced by history to maintain their independence through many wars. Great fortress towns long since in decay used to guard the passes through the mountains. These mountains, though outwardly barren, are rich in mineral wealth, still largely untapped. For centuries, rock salt has been mined here. It is slow, laborious work, great slabs of salt having to be chipped out slowly by hand from the solid rock floor. This is one of the oldest industries in the world. For salt is essential to life, however hardly it must be won. And the mining is by no means the end of the labor. The heavy slabs have now to be transported on the backs of men or of donkeys down the mountain sides to the market centers in the valleys. Coal is another traditional mining industry. There is no mechanization here either. The pick is the only implement. Again, transport is a major problem. There are no road lorries or railway trucks to take the coal from the mine. The miners themselves have to hump the coal in sacks. Between the mountain ranges lie wide desert plains. Here, pastoral nomads dwell, making their temporary encampments with their caravans of camels and their herds of sheep. These are the famous Karakul sheep, whose skins are exported as Persian lamb fur. The nomads bring these skins in bales to market, often traveling enormous distances. Besides the mountains and the desert plains, there are many fertile valleys watered by great rivers like the Oxus. Here, transport and communications are easier, but light winter rainfall coupled with hot, dry summers make farming precarious. Also, frequent wars and invasions have kept the country poor and backward, and tools and methods have remained primitive so that production is low. This wooden plough scratches only the surface of the exhausted topsoil. The scanty corn crops are threshed in the age-old way by oxen tramping out the grain, and winnowing is done by the ancient hand flail. With the help of irrigation, two crops a year can be grown on the same land, rice and millet, succeeding wheat and barley. This is a rice mill.
Another crop is cotton, grown very largely with woman and child labor, especially at picking time. All this work is done by hand. Afghanistan has many historic towns and cities, but again because of wars and invasions, these have tended to decline rather than grow. This market town is such as Marco Polo would have known. It has changed little in seven centuries. Among an almost wholly illiterate population, the public letter writer plies a busy trade. In the bazaars, the age-long chaffering of the East goes on. Merchants cry their wares, customers haggle, and beggars ask for arms. Traditional crafts are handed down from father to son. One such is weaving. Another hereditary skill is the patient craft of the coppersmith. Everywhere linking together in a common bond, this scattered country of 12 million people, can be seen the signs and monuments of their traditional religion, Mohammedanism. Every day, the voice of the muezzin from the mosque calls the people to prayer. Islam is a living force to these people, now no less than it was a thousand years ago. Such has been, and still is, the way of life in Afghanistan. But in 1950, the Afghan government asked for and obtained international help in developing and modernizing their country. The results are already apparent. Women still walk veiled in the streets, but in the new schools, a new literate generation is getting an education that includes balanced nutrition and regular medical attention. The old public letter writer still finds plenty of employment, especially among his contemporaries. But a younger generation is being professionally trained to build a new Afghanistan. The most primitive techniques can still be seen in many places. But alongside them, the most modern technical equipment for the construction of great public works, such as this dam for hydroelectric power. Even quite minor technical devices can help, such as using a saw instead of a pick for salt mining, or a scythe instead of a sickle for cutting corn. Domestic handicrafts persist, but alongside the handcraft, new factories like this modern weaving mill are growing up to produce more things more cheaply for the now growing population. Buy industries are being developed from what were once waste products. This cotton seed will be pressed into cake to feed sheep and so improve the quality and value of Persian lamb skin. As these are a major export for Afghanistan, the increased revenue helps to pay for the many things the country needs from abroad to further the task of modernization. For all this, old ways persist and predominate and are likely to do so for many years to come. Transport especially remains an acute problem. But while there is a long uphill road ahead for the people of Afghanistan, the changes now taking place are important for the future.